Well, it wouldn't be a trip to CES without visiting our good friends at the organizations responsible for HDMI and DisplayPort. So yesterday we visited both the HDMI Forum and Licensing Association who are responsible for HDMI, as well as VESA who are responsible for DisplayPort to get updates on the latest technologies and things that are coming out in 2026. So with HDMI, we've got HDMI 2.2, some more stuff is gonna be ready for that. And then with VESA, and DisplayPort, we've got DisplayPort active cables that you'll be seeing in 2026. So let's talk about some of that stuff after this. Our CES coverage is brought to you by MSI's excellent QD OLED gaming monitors. Offering perfect blacks, infinite contrast, and lightning fast response times, MSI QD OLED monitors are the best way to level up your gaming experience. And there are options available for everyone, whether you're after an incredible 4K panel, a blistering 500 hertz refresh rate, or a new ultra wide with an RGB stripe, they all have the latest features like True HDR, a custom graphene film to cool the display, and HDMI 2.1 with full console support. Check the links below to learn more about MSI QD OLEDs. Also supporting our CES coverage is Thermal Grizzly and their cryo sheet, an excellent alternative to thermal pastes, and because they don't use any liquid, they can never dry out. These graphene thermal pads offer very high thermal conductivity, are easy to use, are extremely durable, and can be used to maximize your CPU and or GPU's cooling performance. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. We'd also like to thank Endorphi, creators of the award-winning Fluctus fans, available in both 120 and 140 millimeters. These high-performance fans are designed to move air efficiently in dense spaces with focused airflow and reduced noise perfect for CPU, power supplies, PC cases, and more. So to learn more, please click the links in the video description. So we'll start with HDMI 2.2. This was announced at CES 2025, an entirely new specification or improved specification that extends the bandwidth capabilities of HDMI from 48 gigabits per second, like we saw with HDMI 2.1, up to 96 gigabits per second for HDMI 2.2. It also supports something called Latency Indication Protocol, aka LIP, which is designed to improve audio video synchronization, which is more of an issue with TVs, amplifier sorts of setups. It isn't really an issue for gaming monitors and that sort of thing, but it's part of the new specification. So since we visited the HDMI Licensing Association back at CES 2025, we've got quite a few updates to get through. So one of them is that the final specification for HDMI 2.2 has been released in June of last year. So that means that all of the manufacturers that are wanting to integrate HDMI 2.2 into their products can start building out the chips and cables and all those sorts of things that are required for this new specification. So again, back when we visited them at CS 2025, they just announced what the technology would be capable of, but now with the final spec, we can start having products being built using it. We were told when speaking to some of the people at the show floor, the booth, that the first things that we'll be seeing onto the market are the cables. So the new Ultra 96 cables, which support the 96 gigabits per second of bandwidth, those will be available, I've been told, by at least one vendor starting in July of this year. So it shouldn't be too far until we see those cables available. You'll be able to get them at up to two meters of length for passive cables and up to five meters in length for active cables, at least initially. So one of the issues that we saw with DisplayPort 2.1, at least with the DP80 cables supporting 80 gigabits per second when they launched a couple of years ago, was that they were very short. Like monitors were coming with 80 centimeter cables in the box, one meter cables, which really isn't sufficient for a lot of devices. But the good news is that with these Ultra 96 cables, they will be starting at actually usable lengths like two meters. So that was good to see. One of the holdups that we were told from uh, one of the cable vendors was relating to the sticker and certification process. So the reason why the specification was released in June of last year and we won't see cables for another whole year is because um, the HDMI forum was still working on the certification for these cables, but also the branding sticker that you will see across all of the official Ultra 96 cables. Speaking to people at the HDMI forum, they also said that at least with HDMI cables, an Ultra 96 cable has to include the sticker. So if you're going shopping and you wanna make sure you're getting a high quality cable that will actually support the 96 gigabits per second of bandwidth, you need to make sure that you're looking for that official sticker on the box. If there's no sticker, we've been told that is not an official cable, it's a fake cable, it may not work up to those speeds. And with 96 gigabits per second of bandwidth, this is a super high level of bandwidth. So it's not easy to run over long cables. You will not be able to see things like four or five meter passive cables. 
We're pretty confident that some brands will be a bit dodgy with this. You might go to Amazon listings, see some no-name cable brands, and they will say things like HDMI 16K, HDMI 32K with 96 gigabits per second of bandwidth, but, and they'll be offering that on four or five meter cables. But the reality is that unless it has that specific sticker from HDMI, uh, it will not be officially certified to work. So, I mean, it may work, it just isn't gonna pass the certification process that HDMI has in place. Of course, with the new cable spec, new bandwidth comes an increase in cost. So these cables are gonna be quite a bit more expensive based on our discussion with some of the cable manufacturers that were showing off some of the things that they could do at CES 2026. One vendor told us that they're expecting their passive cables to cost in the 80 to $100 US range for the longer lengths, which is extremely expensive, especially because for certified HDMI 2.1 cables, you're more looking in the $20 range for things like you know, two meters, three meters, that sort of thing. Another vendor said that HDMI 2.2 cables, Ultra 96 cables would be at least double the cost. So again, we're talking quite expensive for shorter lengths and that's just for the passive cables. If you wanna go up to the active specs to deal with much longer cables, that's gonna be even more expensive as there's increased circuitry and components in those things. So the rollout will begin with the cables, but so far there's been no announcements of consumer electronics devices using uh, HDMI 2.2. So there's no GPUs, no graphics cards that use that spec just yet. And as far as I'm aware, there's no displays yet either. So no monitors or TVs are using HDMI 2.2 at this stage. So this will mean that you'll be able to buy an Ultra 96 cable, sort of a future-proofing looking thing. So in the middle of this year, you will be able to buy something like that, but it's actual usefulness for you at this time, especially for gamers, probably isn't that relevant. We're probably talking about maybe next generation GPUs from each of the vendors or even the generation after that until these cables are relevant. Now, the good news is that for a lot of the monitors that we're seeing on the market today, HDMI 2.2 actually isn't required. HDMI 2.1 with DSC is sufficient for the vast majority of displays that we're seeing, the vast majority of display formats. So that's a really good thing for gamers. You don't really have to worry too much. Now, I know people are sensitive to DSC and things like that. They want monitors where they can turn off DSC and not use it. As far as what I've seen, I don't really think that's relevant for a lot of people. DSC works just fine. There's really no loss of experience, differences in feature support and that sort of thing with DSC. That can apply, of course, with some uh, NVIDIA GPUs, depending on the configurations that you're looking at. But with the latest GPU hardware and that sort of thing, it works just fine. So where HDMI 2.2 will become relevant is with certain display formats. So 1440p 1000 Hertz cannot be run over HDMI 2.1 even with DSC or display stream compression. 4K 500 Hertz can't run over HDMI 2.1 either. And of course, those are quite ridiculous specs like 4K 500 Hertz, 1440p 1000 Hertz. Those are still, I guess, quite far away at this time. But one of the specs that may be a little more relevant that HDMI 2.2 will be useful for is for example, 6K 240 Hz. So here at the show, we saw some Samsung monitors using a 6K resolution, but they only went up to 165 Hz. Now, if Samsung wanted to produce a 240 Hz version of that panel, you would need something like HDMI 2.2 or a high spec version of DisplayPort 2.1 to support that resolution and refresh rate at 10 bits for things like HDR. So that's where HDMI 2.2 will come into play. Should be interesting for some of those formats. And of course, things like larger ultra wides and 8K monitors, all those sorts of things. That's where the benefits will really play out. Let's move now into talking about DisplayPort 2.1. So of course, this specification has been around for a while now. It's accessible and usable on modern graphics cards, including things like the GeForce 50 series, RDNA 4. Those include support for DisplayPort 2.1. What was announced at CES 2025, so last year, was the DisplayPort 2.1B specification. So that included support for a new cable format called DP80LL or DP80 low loss cables. These are active versions of cables that are designed to provide DisplayPort 2.1 over much longer cable lengths. So like we were talking about earlier, the original launch of DisplayPort 2.1, very short cables, and this was a problem for a while. So back at CS last year, they decided to announce this spec to sort of try and alleviate that problem. So a couple of things have happened since CES last year when it comes to DisplayPort. The longest cables that we were seeing back then were a meter long, maybe 1.2 meters long if you were lucky. Since then, we're starting to see passive cables up to two meters in length. So in 2025, you were able to purchase actually DP80 certified two meter cables. We saw some from Silkland. We tested that on the channel earlier this year or earlier last year, actually. 
Um, so the final specification for the DP80 low loss cables, you'll be able to get those, those in at least a 3.5 meter length. And we saw some of those at Vase's little suite here at CES. So you'll be able to get those in USB-C versions, full DisplayPort versions, mini DisplayPort, and all sorts of combinations of those things from various different cable vendors. So at CES 2025, when they announced DisplayPort 2.1b, they said the low loss cables would be up to three meters in length. It sounds like when these cables will officially hit the market, that it's more like three meters will be the minimum, 3.5 meters we saw, and of course the specification supports even longer lengths than that if the certification process is passed and the quality of the cables is up to scratch. So of course with an active cable, there is a chip in the header of the cable, so in the port, it does make those ports slightly larger, but isn't it isn't huge, like you're not talking about massive connectors that stick well out and would be incompatible with a lot of devices. A lot of the implementations we saw were pretty sleek, pretty slick, looked just like a normal cable for the most part. And of course, these are high quality, they're designed to work with longer lengths. So officially, the GeForce 50 series does support DisplayPort 2.1b. When it was announced at CES 2025 last year, that was one of the leading products that used this new spec. However, we do expect that the DP80 LL cables will work with a lot of the existing DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 monitors. So even if they're not necessarily 2.1B spec, as long as you've got the GPU that can do it and you're using one of these cables, they should work just fine with a lot of the monitors that are available. So when it comes to the cost of these cables, of course, it is gonna be more expensive. It does depend on the cable vendors. So VESA don't manufacture the cables. It's up to the cable vendors to produce the cables and pass their certification. But we were told the cost, again, similar to HDMI 2.2, uh, would be in the range of two to three times what we're seeing from passive DP80 cables. So the DP80 cables, they're already more expensive than we see from DP1.4 cables or 40 gigabits per second DisplayPort 2.1 cables. And then to go up to the DP80 LL spec, it's gonna be even more expensive. So if for some reason you have your PC far away from your monitor and you want one of these cables, it is probably gonna cost you a fair bit. But then we've seen two meter DP80 cables that aren't outrageously priced. Like we're not talking 50 or $100. They tend to be somewhere around $25 that we've seen. I think Silkland's two meter one is about 25 bucks. So if we're talking two to three X, yeah, it's expensive. Like spending $50 on a cable is a lot for a cable but it's not crazy for that sort of thing. So the other thing that we wanted to talk to VESA about was this whole issue of finding legitimate good quality cables. One of the things we talked about when we did a lot of this DisplayPort investigation was this problem where you go to Amazon, you wanna buy a high quality cable, and then you see something that's labeled DP80 or 80 gigabits per second, and then you purchase it, you find out it's actually not a certified cable, it doesn't support that spec, and then potentially, it doesn't work with your GPU and monitor combination with you know, DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20. So you end up kind of wasting money. So VESA is aware of this issue. It turns out they actually have a full team of people that's dedicated to finding these listings, chasing them down and getting them removed. So they're quite protective of their brand trademarks and those sorts of things. You can't just use the DP80 logo on a cable without that being you know, certified and provided by VESA. That's the whole process and how it works. But that doesn't stop cable manufacturers from putting things like 80 gigabits per second in their listings. They're still able to do that. They're just not able to use VESA's official brands and those sorts of things on the cables. So it's still something that you'll have to pay close attention to because with VESA, with DisplayPort DP80 cables, the cable vendors aren't actually required to use a DP80 logo on the box or on the cable anywhere. So as we were talking about with HDMI 2.2 Ultra 96 cables, they will be required to use the Ultra 96 you know, sticker logo on the box somewhere. With DisplayPort, they're a bit more flexible with their vendors. They were saying this is more of a cost thing. There is a cost associated with adding DP80 logos to, well, maybe not necessarily the boxes, but at least the cables themselves, adding a DP80 sticker is you know, it does increase the cost. So they wanna offer the flexibility for vendors to save a bit of money and not include those things. But then the trade-off for that is that it's harder to tell what is an official DP80 cable and what is not. You're just gonna to have to pay a bit more attention to those sorts of things when looking at listings and looking at the cables themselves. So yeah, that's pretty much our look into the current status of DisplayPort and HDMI as we head into the rest of 2026. Of course, talking about cables and ports isn't always the most exciting thing, not nearly as exciting as some of the monitors that we've seen here at CES 2026, but I still think it's important because we are gonna start seeing devices using HDMI 2.2 in the near future. We obviously have DisplayPort 2.1 already, 
And there's a lot of things that you need to be aware of when purchasing cables, the things to look out for, the pitfalls that can be associated with them and all that certification process stuff. So, I mean, we've tested displays here at, well, not here physically, but back in our office in Australia, where you try and use like a five meter lower quality cable with a DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 monitor and it just doesn't work. Either the display doesn't power on or you get other issues. So buying a high quality cable is important in some scenarios, especially when you're using the latest displays with high resolutions and high refresh rates. But a lot of these things are really designed for the future of displays. So again, Samsung 6K 165 Hertz monitor, you're probably gonna want a high quality cable for something like that, as well as your 4K high refresh rate displays. So we'll keep you guys updated on any future changes for HDMI and DisplayPort. We're gonna hopefully get some of these active cables in at some point to see how those go. But yeah, until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.